Um, thanks for having me. My name is Christian. I'm working for MasterCard. I'm looking after our crypto go-to-market. And I want to speak about our view on anything blockchain crypto related. And again, it will be just our view, and I'm not even bothering to tell you why it's important because it's a crypto native conference here. So it's really bringing the perspective from a player that is anything but crypto native. We've been around for 50 odd years. Uh, we are processing payments at a global scale. So we have 3.1 billion cards out there, 100 million lo acceptance locations. And last year we processed 8.2 uh, trillion of volumes. Just to put it in perspective, it's roughly uh, two times German GDP. So we've been doing this for a while, but we are very open to new technologies, and that's why we play in the space. Um, so basically, I want to speak briefly about what we do, and it shouldn't be a sales uh, pitch. It's more like explanatory and an invitation for a dialogue, and then also touch a bit on what trends we see and what preconditions we would want to see in place for crypto to go more mainstream, so have a bit of an uh, outlook perspective. For us, it is super important to say that crypto or digital assets are not a monolithic asset class because our risk appetite and our willingness to engage in the space very much depends on where we speak or, or what we talk about. On the one hand, there's Bitcoin, Ethereum, and all of these uh, free-floating cryptocurrencies, and we facilitate for consumers to engage in these, but we don't want to see them on our network for reasons I'm very happy to speak about. On the other end of the spectrum, we have so-called CBDC, Central Bank Digital currencies which aim to be the next generation of cash uh, and the euro amount or USD amount that we have in our wallets and we are very actively playing in this space so we have been the partner of choice for the very first card denominated CBDC project in the world it was on the Bahamas because their disaster relief is an issue because of uh, storms and whatnot. Uh, so rendering um, support, financial support to the population is important. And CBDC was a, a matter of choice and therefore the, we play in this space. We also engage with the Central Bank of Australia on certain pilots and basically speak to all the central banks on how we can engage. In the middle, we see uh, stable coins, and we have quite a narrow definition of stable coins in the sense that they should be really inherently risk-free. And we see an opportunity for these, uh, for payments, for cross-border transfers, and we're also engaging in this. And it's important um, that we are clear when we talk about crypto and what MasterCard uh, is doing in this space that we are very deliberate about what we talk about. because. Our view uh, on stability is, is extremely important. Uh, we are regulated by the ECB, we are regulated by the Belgium National Bank, so stability of value is really important. We can't have situations where a consumer buys a certain merchandise, within two weeks they want to return the merchandise and then you had, had value fluctuation of a couple of hundred percent, so stability of value is important. Uh, equally important compliance, especially KYC, AML, sanction screening, all these kind of things. As you know, we uh, withdrew from certain markets because uh, we, were, um, we were obliged to do so by OFAC, and we see, and I think there's a sadly rich history in, in crypto where compliance, AML and these kind of things are not handled always to the extent that we would like this to be addressed. So this is also very important to us. And last but not least, consumer protection. Um, I'm very opinionated about that one because the consumers that use our products, typically, at least in Europe, they have been socialized in an environment where there's deposit insurance, zero liability, chargeback rights. And the promise that everybody can be their own bank is very compelling to, uh, to many, but when it actually comes to, I have to do this and I have to handle the responsibility, uh, it can be a challenge. But that's why it's important for us to be very adamant on what we want to do and basically make sure that we always tick these boxes, um, stability of value, consumer protection and compliance. So what are we doing in crypto as of today? As um, many of you will know, you can top up your centralized wallets, whether it's Kraken, KubeCoin, Bitpanda, Binance, whatnot, with debit and credit cards. And 
A lot of consumers do that, so we see multi-billion volumes of flows in this just in Europe. And our view is if consumers want to invest in crypto, if consumers want to buy NFTs, we should facilitate this to be able to be done in a safe, simple and secure way. So on-ramping is an important product for us. Similarly important is off-ramping. We see that both consumers as well as exchanges want to offer very simple, very intuitive ways for consumers to uh, get their money off centralized exchanges or out of their wallets and back into the fiat system in order to make purchases or invest the money otherwise. And we also offer this both to cards as well to wallets as well as to current accounts. It's an important service in this regard. And last but not least, we also offer so-called crypto card programs. Crypto card program is basically that an exchange would give a card denominated in crypto to a consumer. So let's stay with the example of Kraken, but any other name would do. I have a Kraken card. I go to a Rewe in Hamburg. I want to buy 20 euros worth of groceries. I tap the card on the POS infrastructure. There comes a request to Kraken asking, is Christian good for 20 euros worth of groceries? Kraken says, yes, he has three bitcoins. So without my doing in real time, they sell off sufficient Bitcoin to unlock 20 euros in, in fiat money. The money goes to Rewe and the transaction is settled. The beauty is that the consumers that are rich in digital assets really have utility. They can use that card at every single MasterCard acceptance location globally. So they really can use their purchasing power. And the merchants are not exposed to any um, risk that might be inherent in crypto because nobody other than the licensed VOSP in this case will touch crypto, not us. So this is also something that we see that resonates with the industry. And then we also do, um, let me call it adjacent services. Is it stable coin settlement pilots? Is it consulting? Is it a multi-token network? Thinking in the direction of at a future stage having MasterCard blockchain native transactions, to be very clear, not on our own blockchain, but blockchain native transactions happening in CBDCs or stablecoin. But this is way more forward thinking at this point. So from our perspective, we are roughly at 4.2% of global populations or 420 million people using blockchain or crypto. And the question is always, is, is this a lot? Is this not a lot? Um, I think it depends. And there's a huge range of numbers, anything between 2 and 10%. I, I settled for 4.2. Um, and one question that always pops up in our mind is, how can we move from 4.2 to 14 or 42%? Not in the sense that we are normative and that we want to see this happening, but we believe if, if the industry is to mature and if the technology is to, is to deliver basically on that promise, we need to move forward there. And um, we see some inherent sort of blockages that we need to be addressed. And uh, on the consumer side, we see basically two things. There's way too much crypto we see that the top three tokens, as in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, account for roughly 80% of the market capitalization. And then there's 22,000 others. I just learned recently that there's 100 tokens alone with the name ChatGPT in it. So I would make a bold statement and say 99% of all of this is crap. Nobody needs this. Nobody, uh, nobody really wants this. And we see that this really creates unease or sort of anxiety on consumer sites to do something wrong. So I think we, we need more clarity on the token side. And the other thing in terms of complicated user journeys and, and wallet loading experiences, for me, it oftentimes feels when I engage in, in crypto as a consumer, it feels like MP3 before the iPod was there. I can download something, I put it on a stick, I move it around, and it's all super cumbersome. And I think the vast majority of people that use it today, they do it because they like the technology, they are intrinsically motivated to do that. But at MasterCard, we've, we've learned that people, at the end of the day, if you want to go mainstream, they are technology agnostic. 
They want to pay, they want to get paid, they want to consume media or split restaurant bills. They don't care about the underlying technology. And therefore, I think this needs to be, this, this needs to get better. The same on the merchant side. We see that lack of integration, liquidity management, integration web shops, all these things that basically are a given in what we call Web 2 um, are not there in Web 3. So if crypto, blockchain, all of these things are supposed to play a bigger role, this needs to be addressed from our perspective. And just to make it very tangible, I uh, contrasted two checkout experience. On the one hand, you have Snoop Dogg uh, on Sandbox, very popular person, 97 uh, million followers. But if you want to buy property next to him, if you want to collect one of these figurines, you have to go via an ERC token, you have to convert fiat into, into crypto, and then you have to incalculate the, the gas fees and all of this. It's not very intuitive. Whereas, for example, Major League Baseball, who also sell NFT collectibles, they allow you to buy the NFT as if, as if it was any other digital merchandise. So you just use your debit card, you just use your credit card, and then you're done. You don't have to calculate anything. There's no intermediate steps. And I'm not saying that this is the way to do it because it's a MasterCard transaction, but I'm saying if NFTs and all of these associated technologies, use cases are to be adopted, the vast majority of people is spoiled from a user experience and they won't settle for this. So we need to think in the second direction. We need to think into the Major League Baseball direction. So from our perspective, um, there's four things that need to be put in place for the industry to mature and move forward. First of all, regulation. And in Europe, we have the benefit of a regulator that is discussing and has signed off on a concept such as MICA or MICA. And we believe that Europe is at the forefront and that if MICA lives up to the expectation, it can be a re landmark regulation, such as GDPR was for data privacy, such as PSC2 was for open banking. And we see that fair, transparent and balanced regulation that puts the consumer's interests at heart and creates a level playing field is basically a door opener for competition and for adoption. Therefore, very much looking forward to regulation in that space. Second one is um, cooperation. And we've seen this in the previous conversation or in the previous uh, slide deck. Uh, players such as Schott, Schwab, uh, Fidelity, BlackRock, Deutsche Bank, all of these players now go in the direction of leveraging blockchain technology and or offering digital assets to their consumers. And we do believe if this is to gain traction, these people are important, they're not crypto native, and I know sometimes that doesn't resonate, but we believe if the industry is to broaden its user base and mature the approach, this is the way to go. We also see, let me, it works, yeah. Um, Convenience and consumer protection, I spoke to that, um, I have a strong, strong view on this because one example that struck me, uh, and some of you will, will recognize this, end of April or, or end of March, I don't know, there was a person, I think an NFT investor seasoned, he supposedly knew what he was doing and he wanted to borrow money against a cyberpunk NFT worth 129,000 US dollar. And instead of putting this down as a collateral, he actually accidentally sent it to burn address and it's irreversibly gone. So it's like setting a Mercedes or Porsche on fire. And I believe um, these things cannot happen. And again, I spoke earlier to consumer protection in the form of deposit insurance up to 100,000 euros in Europe mainly. Um, zero liability, chargeback rights. So I think if crypto is to go mainstream, this is really something that needs to be addressed. And I know there's views on self-custody and anything, but I think uh, it's something that needs to be looked at. And last but not least, um, new use cases in utility. As I mentioned, we see that technology as such only resonates with early adopters. It's really how, make I, how do I make people's life easier? How do I really add value? And we think that in the crypto space, there needs to be more real life use cases. And one thing that I 
personally find interesting is carbon credits on blockchain, but there's many, many other use cases. And our role is basically to engage with the industry and to unlock these use cases by bringing our assets to the table, by bringing cards to the table and all our capabilities. And then hopefully we'll see a crypto industry that flowers, uh, matures and uh, brings value to everyone. Thank you.